This light is a Lumen Top SD Mini, and here it is in its stock form. And here it is after I finished. I've upgraded the light to my Meld UI with RGB, UV, and white. The switch is updated to an up and a down, and a 64 by 32 OLED display has been added to give mode information, battery voltage, drive current, LED temperature, drive level, strobe speed, and to demonstrate the menu options. So Lumentop contacted me and asked me if I would do a product review on one of their lights, to which I said, no, I don't really do those, but I would be happy to modify it and do a video on that. And I completely expected them to say no. I don't know why they would want me to hack their product apart, but to my surprise, they said yes and sent me this SD Mini, which I think is awesome. Uh, most companies wouldn't do that. So what I did, uh, I didn't really have a plan when I got this. Um, I checked out the light for about one night, tried it out, and then um, started to think about what I wanted to do. And just by chance, this charging port that they had uh, built into the side of the head turned out to be almost the perfect size to fit one of these little tiny half-inch OLED graphic displays that I had. So uh, from that point on, I pretty much had to pursue that that path. So I confirmed that the reflector was big enough to fit one of my RGB WUV boards behind it using the stock XPL High. So I got one of those boards prepped and put that into the head and was able to seal up the reflector early. In order to get the display to fit into the head I had to hog out a little bit of aluminum around the corners but luckily nothing out on the outer surface so when it's all done there's no uh, visible nicks in the anodizing. The display needs several support components that go around it for the charge pump and a few other things. And in order to keep it very, very flat, I soldered those uh, just free form on the back of the flat flex connector that's on the OLED. And then I could just bring out the five wires that I need to, to communicate and power it. Uh, so those thread in through the existing hole into the main driver cavity. And uh, once that display was working, I then had to figure out how the existing driver works so that I could try and reuse it. So after doing some poking around with the driver running, I figured out what they had done with the design and uh, conveniently the lower board was the buck regulator for the white channel, which I could leave mostly alone and remove the top board which had their microcontroller and charge controller. And then I picked a, a really uh, pretty big um, overkill microcontroller at PIC 18F26K22 uh, just because it's one I had used a lot and I didn't want to worry about running out of memory for writing graphics stuff which takes up a lot so I wired that up uh, dead bug style on the top of the old driver board taking control of that buck driver through PWM and an enable I added an op amp to measure the white LED drive current using the existing current sense resistor so I didn't add any additional voltage drop and I added a thermistor and battery monitor voltage divider both of which can be powered off in standby and then I decided to remove the existing single switch and replace it with two separate switches because the area on this existing uh, button boot is pretty large so it's easy enough to uh, push it in two distinct places to get it up and down which makes using the user interface a lot better. So once all that those electronics were established I had to uh, get everything wired up. There's a, an enormous number of wires coming out of the head because of all the uh, measurement and OLED stuff and then I put AMC 7135 regulators in uh, to control RGB and UV and I ended up just gluing those to the inside of the head directly to the aluminum so that I could bring down just signal wires which made um, connecting everything to the driver a lot easier. All the wiring was done with 34 gauge enamel magnet wire which keeps it nice and flexible so I don't have to worry about stuff tearing off of the pads 
when I install the driver. And then uh, luckily I was able to cut a few traces on the bottom board and reuse the holes that originally connected to the daughter board uh, for my programming connection. So I can now reprogram this light without taking it apart. Um, which is important because the software is uh, sort of a work in progress. Right now on the display it will show the mode information, uh, the drive level or strobe speed in the white modes, and then it will always, always show the LED board temperature, the drive current, and the battery voltage. The white drive current is a direct measurement and the color drive current is a, an estimation based on the 7135 regulators by multiplying 350 by the PWM duty cycle. Thank you for watching and thank you to Lumentop for providing this light. They have also given me a coupon code that you can use which I will put in the description. So thanks for watching and see you next time.